Hello everyone and welcome to Movies of Darkness. I'm Frozen Fallout and today Moto Rory and I will be watching The Crow. Moto, what can our listeners expect? Well, Frozen, we will be watching The Crow and trying to interpret the events in the story from the perspective of the World of Darkness role-playing games. If people would like to watch along, they can go ahead and hit play now. The main thing we will be doing is trying to explain the events on screen would be interpreted according to if they happened in a session of a World of Darkness game. For example, we might say that a certain event would require a role of some sort, or if we encounter a character, we'll be speculating on what supernatural they might be and what powers they might have. Also, while we'll watch, uh, we'll be filling out a character sheet for Eric Draven, the main character of a cr The Crow. Uh, now, if you're watching along with us, uh, we're currently in the uh, the starting credits. Uh, yeah, you just popped just up the crow. Up. And, yeah, uh, uh, let's just now we see the start city. by acknowledging that uh, Brandon Lee did. Uh, this is the movie where Brandon Lee died. Uh, and it's October thirtieth. Uh, yeah. Devil's Night is what it opens up, but it doesn't give us a year. Uh, no, it doesn't. It also never says the name of the city. So when I first started looking into this. Um, I kind of came at it from a few perspectives and the first one that I came up with was that this actually takes place in an umbral realm, specifically, uh, dystopia or, uh, which is also called cyber realm, which is basically a reflection of cities. Uh, and this would be taking place in what is called old town, which is basically the rundown version of cities in the umbra. Oh, that's that's an interesting aspect. But this would be yeah, fact, uh, not Wraith Umbra, then. This would be actual... Uh, correct. So, But then, but um, you're saying that there's like an underlying Wraith aspect, maybe, to this gate, or to this uh, uh, realm as yeah, well? So, so let's just jump into that right now. Are you familiar with something called The Risen? A little bit, yeah. That's, uh, that's like how they can come back in a body at Earth, right? And that's what a lot yeah. of Wraith kind of became after. Uh, that's like the zombie yeah. aspect of uh, Hunter. Yeah, so so I've, I've kind of always known about the Risen in the back of my head, but I always considered them to be zombies. Uh, so the original Wraith source book came out in 1994. Uh, I can't remember if it was before or after the movie. Uh, the revised version came out in 1996, at the same time as the Risen source book, uh, which is a supplement. In the Risen supplement, it specifically references the crow as uh, an inspiration. It's basically, somebody watched the crow and said, how can I make this in the world of darkness? They chose Wraith. Uh, it, all, it is almost a perfect match. Yeah, for my understanding um, is is the the whole like yeah you get you get either your body back or even somebody else's body and then you could you you still seem very human you know you and you degrade over time, um, uh, and, yeah, yeah exactly, and and that kind of kind of happens. Um, I don't know about the degradation though of uh, that doesn't. So seem when a risen takes over their previous body. Uh, it, it basically fills their body up with uh, the corpus and it, it brings them back almost entirely. Uh, the, the interesting thing, in Wraith 20, it specifically says that you can't come back if your body doesn't have a head anymore. But in the original supplement, uh, Decapitated is a seven-point flaw that you can buy. Ah, yes, the revisions where they were like, nah, we need to have... Uh... A way of making it so they can't come back. Yeah. Well, de decapitation, um, so, that sounds like the line. Yeah, so I'm, I'm mostly thinking about this movie in terms of this is a real city in the real world, and Eric is coming back. So thinking about fetters, uh, the girl is a fetter. Uh, in this movie, she's called Sarah. Um, and that's who's crying on the screen actually, right now. Yeah, so, so I actually went and read the original comic book that this is based off of. It's pretty. It's a pretty loose interpretation, honestly. Um, 
And in the comics, she's named Sherry, which is obviously too close to Shelly, which is the girl that dies uh, for movies. Uh, having two people with similar names is difficult. Um, but anyway, so as we now see the crow, let's get into how Risen work. Uh, so we'll get into how Wraith works in general, probably as we continue to go. Uh, but the main thing about Wraith is that you have a shadow. And in order to become a Risen, you have to negotiate with your shadow after doing a bunch of other stuff. And the shadow comes back into the real world with you in what is called a conduit. The conduit has uh, 10 health levels. And if it dies, uh, you basically, what is it, the reason? Yeah, you basically get ripped back to oblivion. Ah, so it's a good deal for the, the shadow to a certain degree because uh, they're like, you're going to get ripped back to the oblivion pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, because remember, the shadow, its entire thing is it's trying to get you to oblivion. So it's it'll help you as long as it kind of gives the shadow more angst. And Risen generate angst a lot faster. Uh, so angst is the uh, the power source for shadows. So in this movie, the crow is very much the conduit. Although as I was watching through the first time, I thought it might be the wedding ring. Also, if you haven't watched this before, I'm spoiling the shit out of half of this movie already. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, this is a non-spoiler free uh, version of uh, yeah. watching. <laughs> watch it first and then uh, come back and watch this. So let's see. Uh, this character is uh, played by Ernie Hudson awesome actor uh he is officer albrecht previously detective albrecht although they don't i'm not sure if they specifically say why he was demoted but they reference it a bunch of times and frankly he's he's pretty mundane oh yeah i would say I, to... wouldn't, I wouldn't give him any he's a good solid mortal in the uh in the world of darkness uh yeah, set up. And like the kid, I would say is not a any supernatural a fetter, maybe, but uh... yeah, because she has a, a strong emotional attachment uh, to Eric. Now, okay, I thought that was you the lighting up uh, a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not when I'm inside the house, no. Yeah, I know. Right, That's the reason I weirded out a little bit. I was like, wait, what? So, now these guys are the... You'll find out later, they're the ones that murdered Eric Draven and his girlfriend, Shelly, fiancé. If this was an umbral realm, they would just be Banes. Just spirits of the worm, uh, generally urge worm, possibly corruption worm. But these would be real humans... Uh, yeah, if this is happening in the real world, they would be humans. I would argue almost certainly Fomori, uh, which are humans uh, infected with Banes. No, I mean like the Banes. like uh, Derek uh, or Eric would be a um, a mortal, even if it was in or, or would you say he's a, what are they eff eff effigies or something like that? If it was an umbral sure realm. Oh, if it's an umbral realm. Well, there's actually a couple possibilities there. Uh, regular humans can exist in an umbral realm. Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, using the sympathetic kind of umbral travel, if he lived in a city that uh, had some parts of the gauntlet that was uh, very thin, he and his fiance could just kind of get sucked into the umbral realm and, and not be able to get out. And then they would live out their entire lives there and kind of turn into spirits over time, but then eventually die. Whereas everything else that is completely spirit-based just kind of go through the motions over and over again. You know, these guys. Uh, in the Umbral Realm, they would just be Banes kind of... Mm, okay. Doing their thing over and over again. Yeah, I think it fits a little bit better with it being on Earth, but it is an interesting concept of having it being in an Umbral Realm. 
Yeah. Uh, specifically, the Umbral Realm, uh, I kind of got from the fact that they never say what city it is. Um, although in the comic, it is Detroit. Uh, <laughs> kind of makes sense. This was <laughs> this, the yeah. comic was written in the late '80s, early '90s when RoboCop uh, was, was coming out. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah. all know what Detroit was anticipated to be like in the year 2000. Yeah, just like this. <laughs> I do find in the comic book. Do they reference a year? Uh, yeah. Although in the comic book, he doesn't actually die. Um, in the comic book, you know, just from my general reading today i kind of kind of kind of breezed through it pretty fast um i would actually say that eric draven although i don't think they actually ever say his name in the comic so the crow uh the crow is his avatar and he would have awakened uh during the the murder of his girlfriend oh yeah and that would make him a euthanatos then instead of uh oh. Or something Hell similar. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. You know, but yeah, yeah. I could see that as being an awakening for sure. Um, that's and that's yeah. something that's interesting about mage is that you you can get like all different types of awakenings. Like the the concept of just uh your standard like, um you know, uh like just went through some kind of like trip or something like that, um, or you like did some powerful magic to stop somebody or something, um, but you can do it all the way to like you thought you died. <laughs> like it got oh, to yeah. that point. Yeah, and that actually tracks I I'm not sure if you Thanatos generally have life powers, but he, he essentially in the comic has similar powers. Oh also in the comic he is uh he's followed around by cats a lot, which I thought was fun. Yeah, I like how the cat attacked that dude. He was like, no, you're bad, bad man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where they give you, like, a what happened. Pretty fucking graphic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, the, the themes of this movie are pretty intense. Uh, which kind of makes sense for a World of Darkness-style movie. Oh yeah, this feels World of Darkness like I could see this even being like in the 90s and just in the World of Darkness because that's what cities look like sometimes it's buildings burning, you know, it just happens especially oh, yeah. in Detroit. Also, you know, this movie is also famous for its aesthetic. Um the the fashions of the 90s. So these guys run the gamut. It's uh these bad guys do grunge, uh, goth, a bit of industrial, and then later on in the movie, especially with the big bad, we get to see the kind of more vampiric Victorian romantic era of dress. You know, which is, it's just a huge part of the vampire aesthetic. Okay, and here is the first example of Eric Draven healing his own wounds. So, uh, when you come back as a Risen, there's a few interesting parts. Oh, man. Never mind. I got to talk about this. Swallowing bullets with a shot is just such a World of Darkness thing. It's like a ritual. Just consuming oh, yeah. a sense of death oh, into yeah. your own body. That's a good, good ritual. Pretty sure it wouldn't like kill you. So, <laughs> although these guys, man, just arch like if in an umbral realm, these guys are archetypes for just bad dudes. These, this is the the manifestation of human minds around the world imagining bad guys, which you know, movies are essentially umbral realms if you think about it. Oh yeah, movies could uh, totally be in the umbral realms. Like every movie could have its own umbral realm for sure that just, you know, continuously plays out the movie over and over again. Maybe going a little bit before and a little bit beyond what was happening in the movie, but possibly on like a loop. Yeah. All right. Uh so real quick, um when he was healing the damage on his hands in the previous scene. So the 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 power that is uh so for vampires it's 
blood points. Uh, for werewolves, it's Gnosis. Uh, mage don't technically have one. Uh, and then for for Wraith, it's Pathos, which is basically emotional energy. Um, pathos is regenerated uh, when you seek your passions. Right. So whenever, so his main passion actually, and we should put this down on the character sheet that we're making, uh, revenge, uh, which I think is a rage passion. Um, so whenever he I spell that seeks right? revenge. and is revenge, yeah, that's right. Um, so basically, anytime he kind of fulf- is is moving towards that, he can roll. Uh, and I'll find the the role sometime in the future. Uh, and regain pathos. Now he can spend pathos to heal. Um, I believe it's one pathos for two points every turn. Also, I think we could fill out some of the physical stuff here because I would put him at probably like a Dex three, stamina three. You know, at least in his base human form um you know he's definitely seems charismatic we don't see much uh, manipulation pretty a pretty good appearance we can his appearance this. five yeah he's a he's a sexy man he's showing his off all his sexy six, right now with his... makeup. so right, right now so he's a... going through his like makeup uh of becoming the crow after having all of those crazy memories yeah and if, I would actually say that some of these other things are his fetters so maybe like his just his outfit what do you think about that oh yeah I could see his like if if we didn't get to see much of him before he was at this point but maybe if he goes if he goes out with this outfit all the time like I mean he seemed to have it ready so you know I could see those being his favorite, you know, pieces of clothes. Yeah. Well, it's things that uh, are emotionally tied to you. So, so farther down on the, on the thing is fetters. So I put uh, Sarah, which is the girl, uh, the outfit. Um, trying to think if there's a place where we could put, because the shadow in this case is actually a conduit. All right, so this is uh, oh, I can't remember these guys' names without the uh, the pop ups on the window. Um, this is the guy going to the um, the pawn shop. That's Lord Nikon, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Throwback to our uh, um, hackers yeah, episode. Also that we hackers. Did. Yeah. Is is this before right, uh, or after? Ha- this would be after or before Hackers, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Hackers was ninety five. I think. I like how he does like a teenage kid, and in this he seems like he's maybe in his thirties. Like, oh no, he was a uh, older in Hackers. He was like the older friend. He was the yeah. You're right. He was the old, but he looked so yeah. young. He he he. I don't know. It looks he like de aged. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so if this was in an umbral realm, the transaction at the pawn shop is probably the transference of uh, uh, basically Gnosis, uh, TAS. Uh, in in the cyber realm, it's referred to as juice. Everything is juice. Ooh. The entire economy is built around juice. Uh, all right, so this is when he's running across the rooftop, so it's a good time to point out uh, they finished this movie with uh, the the stuntmen that were the the stand-ins for uh, Brandon Lee, the main actor. Uh, and in fact, this is one of the first movies where they used CGI to cover up his uh, the face to make it look like Brandon Lee. Uh, one of those uh, stuntmen, his name is Chad Stahelski. Uh, I'll just run through it real quick here. Chad Stahelski was Keanu Reeves's stuntman, uh, stunt double for the matrix and that stuntman uh went on to be the director of every single john wick movie so that's another connection 
to the director, you know the other wow. one that we've done. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, in fact, I learned about uh, second unit directors, which are apparently a thing in Hollywood. They they mostly do um, uh, big uh, stunt sequences. And he was a second unit director for a long time. And John Wick was actually his first movie that he directed by himself. Oh, that's interesting. All right. So he just jumped off a building uh, about a minute ago. Yep. Um, and he can heal himself because he is now actively generating pathos. Ah, he's on the and, revenge. And he, yeah. And he's using it to regenerate his body. All right, so we're seeing him brawling oh. here. Um, he seems to be pretty decent at brawling. Seems to be pretty All strong. Right. I think I'm going to put him up to strength of four in his new form. You know, he might actually. Have... You don't maybe need to do that. Here's a fun thing that I learned about the Risen. They have access to four vampiric disciplines. What really? Yep. Potence, uh... celerity. Oh, where is it? I thought uh, I marked all these down. Because he's definitely... Uh, Obfuscate is one of them. And... Potence. Oh, yeah. Celerity, Fortitude, Obfuscate, Potence. Yeah, yep. The uh, three physicals buy... and Obfuscate. Yeah, when you create a Risen character, you can spend uh, seven freebie points on one dot in each of those. Um, but you only get 15 freebie points, so it's... Um, but yeah, when I read that, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, so yeah. in order to use those, you just have to spend a point of pathos. Okay, so I'm going to put this underneath other Arcani, and I'm going to give him potence, at least here. I don't see any celerity oh, yeah. being done, but I see, like, maybe some fortitude, maybe some potence. So I'm going to give him, like, two points in potence and one point in fortitude. Yeah. Now, I will say that this combat, if you tried to, to act it out, uh, at a table it would take about you know two hours even though it's just two characters now one thing that they don't go into in the books is whether or not the conduit uh can like communicate with you although i'm i'm i would argue that it absolutely can because it is your shadow oh catching that knife i think uh Might be celerity. Ooh, yeah. One extra action a turn might not seem like too fast. So I definitely didn't spell celerity properly there. Oh, nope. All right, here we see another example of uh one of the many aesthetics of the 90s this is grunge and industrial i'm also going to give him three in brawl oh yeah seemed to handle himself quite well and he seemed to handle that knife uh so i'm going to give him a little bit of melee give him two in melee okay <laughs> Arcade man, what the hell? These guys are assholes. All right, so now this guy, if this is the real world, uh this new guy here is I'm pretty sure he's an assassin, probably you Thanatos. Mm. Uh focus being guns. All right, now this character um and this character. Uh, so the, so the, uh, the big bad the, is the man tip top. And I think her name is, yeah, I got to bring up the IMDb. Amazon usually has the, the thing that shows you all this stuff. Yeah. It's not popping up with like the info. Okay. So this is Byling as Micah. Uh, and this guy is tip top. So she is definitely a mage. Yes, she definitely acts like a 
Your tattoos would probably be a focus. Her, uh, that crystal ball that she was fucking with. Yeah. Now, it's also possible that, oh, there's a titty. Uh, <laughs> it's also possible that uh, either one of them could be Fomori uh, of some sort. Uh, if the dude is a Fomori, I think I wrote this down somewhere, that he would be uh, a high level representation of the urge worm. Or the Fomori would be. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Now, if he is a Bane in an Umbral realm, he literally is just a spirit of the the Urge Worm, just a a high level manifestation, not an Incarna. Um, but I don't remember all. Oh, uh, so that place is called the Pit. So in uh, the description of the Cyber Realm slash Dystopia, the very bottom of the whole uh, ecosystem is the Pit. It's where all the dregs go. Uh, and in fact, Ratkin have a gift that allows them access to the pit uh, for some reason. Interesting. Just a bit of trivia. Nice. All right. So if this is an umbral realm, this is just a dysfunctional uh, family. They, they, like, they're always the same age. They con constantly go through uh, playing out this essentially play over and over again. If it's the real world, I'm going to say her mother is uh, pro probably a Fomori. Yeah, I could see that that she became a Fomori. Basically all the supporting characters are Fomori. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you don't want to like turn them into a bunch of other... Not, nobody's distributing any um, you know, like only goes out at night kind of, although is it nighttime, like all the time in here? Like, is the show ever have a daytime? Uh, yeah, it does. It's not much. <laughs> Cause I wonder how many characters might be vampires actually, or, or you could do ghouls. She could be a ghoul of, of a vampire. Oh Yeah. Actually, that kind of makes sense because uh, she is addicted to drugs and it could, instead of being morphine like they uh, reference in the movie, it could be uh, Vitae. Mm -hmm. Or Mix. Um, yeah. Oh, and so this is another fetter that he uh, is displaying here. Oh, look at that healing power right there. Yeah. Uh, so he is showing, though, that he's got a ring that he's looking for. That's another one of his fetters. Okay, yeah. So he'll put down a ring, and it seems pretty important to him if he's willing to, like, going through all of this here. Um, I'm going to put that at the highest uh, amount here. Yeah. Of course, it's his wedding ring, so. Yeah. Now, so an interesting thing about the fetters. Now, the the conduit, which based on the movie is definitely the crow right because they right we'll, we'll get to that part at the very end <laughs> oh, man that guy has a lot of knives in him <laughs> uh is actually supposed to be your strongest fetter and it's supposed to be something that you're emotionally attached to now they never reference him being attached to a crow but i'm gonna have to put it in because that's how the system works well, I mean, you, you could bend it a little bit and say that, you know, it's possibly a crow that he sees uh, every day, you know, like he's made it a, a distant attachment to. <laughs> yeah. It became his, his buddy, um, you know. All right. Um, so now in an umbral realm, uh, the crow would have to be, uh, so my theory is that it's... Um, it's an incarna of crow that is has brought this guy back from the dead kind of in order to seek balance in that umbral realm and him drawing the crow symbol is chiminage uh, which is referenced in the umbra books uh, which is basically the the thing you do for the serve uh uh, for the 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 spirit. Okay. Yep. Yep. Something that to... you do as a 
as an act of uh um showing your gratitude basically and yeah appeasing them okay so now as he's looking for the ring which is one of his fetters um i'll just pass, point out that so as for a wraith to come back uh they have to have certain uh arcanoi uh one being puppetry uh so it's it's the basic skill needed to inject yourself into a body uh so i'm just going to put down i'm going to say two dots in puppetry and so one of the things that he did when he found the ring was he had a flashback yes um, yep. and if you know anything about arcanoi the arcanoi of memory is Nemosinus or Nemosinus. Uh, and he actually uses it multiple times uh, throughout the movie, and I'll try to point them out. Uh, so I'm actually going to give him three, because I believe he uses the level three power. Oh, he's also displaying some uh, firearms here. So he, we know he's got at least okay. two dots and firearms. Just the way he's acting, you know. Seems to be pretty good. In the comic, he killed that guy. <laughs> also, I love that shot, which is coming up. Uh, you know, he dumps the rings in there. Why, why, why would you talk back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, a pretty good shot right there. The the, yeah, the rings shot with the all rings popping coming out of the barrel. Really good. All right. Um So now that I'm remembering it, um what is it? it should be is it backgrounds? Um being remembered is a thing in the Wraith world. It's called Memoriam. Yes. Yes, there is Memoriam. Um, I'm only going to give him one, though. Cause... <laughs> yeah, he seems... Well, he's got, like, two people. Yeah, I think that's, like... <laughs> I think that's... He doesn't have a very strong Memoriam. Yeah. <laughs> all right uh so did you know that there are two arcanoi only for the risen oh no i did not know that all right they are fascinate and serendipity uh the, the basic abilities of fascinate are tuning in uh, by whistling or humming a sequence of notes the wraith can implant the tune in the target's mind so that they can't get it out of their head uh, the victim will have trouble concentrating on tasks and may well be driven to odd acts. Uh, he can use it to distract. Um, he can use it to basically force somebody to remember something, which is kind of something that he does later in the movie. Uh, and then the rest of the high-level part powers for that one are uh, basically compelling people. Uh, to do things. Uh, quick note, the guy that was stealing the TV is the guy that originally wrote the comic. That happened a little bit back there. Um, nice little tidbit there. So right now he's uh, trying to find him again, looking lost. Is he talking to himself? Yeah. So, you know, I would, I would put that with obfuscate. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be a great, uh, great obfuscate uh, display right there, where he just disappears. All right. So now this is definitely some mage shit right here. Cocaine as a focus is pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost cult of ecstasy ish, you know. Yeah. All right, so they're burning an eyeball in a goblet. Um, 
pile of cocaine, sexy outfit. And and he specifically says eyeballs are where the power is. Um, so he's either um, harvesting tasks right now. Uh, they don't actually reference him like trying to accomplish anything with that. <laughs> Uh, so nobody cleared it with me is kind of referenced if they're in an umbral realm, uh, like he's kind of the, the spirit that controls this area. So if you would do this as an umbral game, would you have everybody be spirits though and nobody actually be humans? Uh, no, I, I would have some people be humans. People that are kind of you know they they become so archetypal uh of like you know a failed mother a, a street urchin a uh disgraced cop an assassin that they're literally pulled into this world and they can't tell the difference mm. so they kind of live the rest of their life just in this uh umbral representation of a city okay and so that's Almost why he can still come back as a, he would still be a risen even in the uh umbral version of this i was actually thinking that that could be the the like happy medium where he is a risen uh but he doesn't rise in the real world he like goes to this umbral realm um but now the thing about uh regular humans living in an umbral realm they they can't realize it it's only supernaturals like werewolves and uh mostly werewolves that like realize they're in an umbral realm so they can actually get out and mages as well would probably fall into oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. So right now he's, he's talking to the girl. He's got some flashbacks that he just had. And now uh, she's just realized that it was Eric. He obfuscated again. So did we mm -hmm. put obfuscate as a power? No, nope, it's going to do that. Oh, yeah. I spelled that right, I think. He's got at least one dot so he can jump into shadows. I'll give him two, though. He doesn't have the ability to make multiple faces, like, see, seem like other people, so I'll keep it at two. Is that one of the powers of Obfuscate? Yeah. Basically, he can do the uh, disappear, um, I think, in... Like, as long as nobody's seeing him, he can disappear at level two, and at level one, he can jump yeah. into a shadow. Yeah, it is notable that in the uh, Wraith 20 version, they took Obfuscate out as a discipline that's possible for the Risen. Oh, really? But they kept the other one, Potence, Fortitude, and Celerity? Yeah, because those are the ones that don't have uh, specific power uh, powers at different levels. Uh, it's just whatever level it is, like, um, yeah. You know more about that stuff than I do. Yeah, that's, uh, um, obfuscate is like an extra power would be kind of powerful. Uh, but all right. So we've got, uh, drugs being done as you know, that's uh, that's what that's what Bane's do. Yeah. yeah. So if this is an umbral realm, this is just uh, even if they're regular people pulled into the umbral realm, they're just going through the motions of this over and over again uh, as archetypal characters. Uh, but the Bane's would you know also do that if this is the real world, possibly uh, vampire Vitae. Um, I don't know, they don't display any what? kind of super even even Bane is almost a strong stretch for a lot of these guys these guys who could just be just corrupted humans because none of them really display any like great power or strength you know um, even the knives well, guy in the number was... realm just a just a low level Bane could just be like something that looks like a human and acts like a human but is just 
an aspect of the worm. True. Uh, in in the real world, if they are infected with a bane, they're fomori, but they're they're low level fomori. Uh, actually, a really good shot of him just like caressing the light bulb with his head. Uh, Also notable in the comic, uh, he was not uh, in a band. That was never actually part of it. Oh, so it's an add-in. Yeah. This is an interesting uh, way to intimidate somebody. Just allow them to blow your hand off, basically. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll put a hole through it. Oh yeah, and he, and he is generating just an absolute shit ton of pathos right now. <clears throat> So he's almost like purposely not spending it right now so he can do this. Oh, yeah, and that's now he's spending the pathos yep. in order to heal his corpus. <laughs> Interesting uh, beginning to a joke. Actually a pretty good joke. <laughs> the uh jesus br comes into a hotel brings in what was it three uh three nails can three you put me up for the night can you put me up for the night <laughs> i like how she just like just gets the fuck out of there she's like I'm... <laughs> well she's hiding i mean if if that happened to you you fucking run <laughs> Um, well, I mean, that means she's, you know, she. I feel like she's not, you know, she's much more of a victim than even just like a, a supernatural of any sorts, you know. She's, she's giving off the complete, uh, like, uh, victim slash, you know, abused. Um, The flashbacks in this that are all crazy. The uh, I like the red lighting to display that it's a uh, um, a flashback. And it's interesting that you bring that up uh, because so the original comic was in black and white, and the the people that made this movie wanted it to be in black and white, but the studio wouldn't let them. Uh, so they kind of uh, did a compromise. And so most of the movie that isn't the flashbacks is very, very drab. You almost never see any bright colors. There's almost no blue or green. It's all kind of black, white, and red. Yeah, what was and that movie? In... Oh, this is an interesting oh. display of power here. The ability to yeah, pull out the drugs out of her system. All right. Uh, Castigate 3, Purify, is the possibility that I wrote down. Uh, yeah, I could see that being manipulated there. Although, technically, she would have to be a wraith in order for that to work. Um, try and look it up real quick. Well, sometimes you gotta bend the rules a little bit for it to fit into a movie. Partner focuses her power on another wraith's shadow to weaken it. It, it basically removes angst. Um, if he was a a, uh, a mage, that would probably just be a life three, uh, matter two. Uh, if it is Vitae, wow, that's prime. Yeah, for sure. Um, I could see definitely. I would almost see. Yeah, I think you would need life three. Maybe life two might get away with it. Yeah. Uh, now, one one interpretation that I thought of was, now, if she was a Fomori, I'm not sure how exactly you do it, probably Spirit and Prime. He might have just removed the Fomor from her body, the Bane. Oh, uh, she goes yeah. Back, uh, she goes back and, like, takes care of her kid after this. 
Yeah, she like it like completely cleans her up. It's not just getting rid of the drug. It was like even like a yeah, it could have a, definitely a good way of, of seeing that. Yeah. I hear your dog in the background. Yeah, she's getting really angsty. Oh. She's a good just girl. went outside, but that's just how puppies are sometimes. Well, I'm sure the listeners will uh forgive. All right, so now you see the, the crow outline again. So I, I think that's Chiminage, uh, if it's in an umbral realm. Uh, otherwise, there's not much supernatural. Oh, uh, he's still wearing his police hat. Uh, and which, mage-wise, those could be foci-type kind of things, uh, rituals that he's doing for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. They don't move. Um, I'm actually going to go, uh, I'm going to go AFK for just one second, just so I'm going to, uh, okay, I'll just keep talking. Down. Yep. Yeah. Um, so in theory, if he is, uh, if the cop, uh, Albrecht is, uh, in this, if this is in the spirit realm, uh, wearing cop hat is because he's an archetype of a disgraced police officer. Uh, like in the movie, he, you know, has the kind of rundown apartment, has the the bare fridge, uh, the the photographs of uh, his previously happy marriage. Yeah. So now if he is a Risen, uh, this part doesn't make sense because Risen basically have to work really, really hard to get back. Um, it takes probably well more than a year in the Shadowlands and the Tempest in order to uh, gain the powers that you need, specifically puppetry. Um, this character definitely has Nemosinus, uh, the memory uh, powers. Uh, and I think there's a few more. Once I find them, I'll put them on the sheet. Uh, oh, this is him using Nemosinus. Uh, let's see oh, which yeah. power this is. I am um, back now. And. This is, uh... This is open book level three. I should have put down page numbers so I could actually find this. It looks intense, man. The great yeah. uh, open book is when you're extracting memories out of people. Uh, so that would actually work perfectly uh, in a game. Uh, you would be able to do that to people. I do like like the uh, interaction between these two. For being a human, he's very relaxed. Oh yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, there was. I think at some point I was thinking, okay, maybe the cop is also a fetter, but that actually doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, it's because they were not emotionally connected. Yeah. Uh, in life. I always wondered about the idea of making new fetters though, you know. Oh, actually, I think that might be a thing for Risen. They can actually, because uh, there is a system for creating fetters. I think, is that life web? I think there is, yeah. I, I believe there's power for that. I can't remember if life web does. The, I know that's all tied into fetters. I'm not 100% sure. If uh, you were able to create a fetter, though, that might be possible, though. Let me double check here and see if I can find the refuge. <laughs> the display, I don't have to always use uh, um, off use gate to leave. I could just walk out your front door, too. Yeah, but there, um, now there is, a. oh, I like that the building just has a sign on the top that says trash. It's so umbral to me. Okay, so yeah, there are a few ways to make a fetter. You can, um, create a temporary fetter with level three of life web. 
Um, you can monitor, a monitor can strip a fetter from another wraith, and then a monitor can claim the mortal's soul and turn them into a fetter. Um, so, 20th anniversary changes a couple of things and says that they can, uh, willing mortal, living, undead, supernatural, um, either one of those two as, uh, can take, the, can just take them as a fetter. In return, they can com communicate with the, um, wraith at will, regardless of whether where they are from each other so that's interesting so instead of taking their soul and turning it in with the soul pack they do souls interwoven so you become more interwoven but yeah it's not it, it is a human kind of thing so he might have if we wanted to give him five uh he could make a uh a connection yeah because he does make him. quite a connection yeah, let's let's just put it down albrecht the cap Let's yeah. leave it at a one, though. And then we'll boost uh, uh, life web up to five. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. Um. So the guy opened a vault filled with swords. So if he is a mage, that's definitely a folk guy. Uh, you know, probably for. I don't know. Um. One of the spheres. Either that, or he's just a dude into swords. Uh, swords are pretty cool. A lot of people like them. People do like swords. You have some. I do have some. I do. I, I like swords. Do you like swords? I like swords. Swords. Eight bit reference, but <laughs> um. So right now he's not really doing anything here that would make me, you know, he's not not doing anything supernatural, but uh, he seems to be pretty skilled with a sword. That's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so I find it. Um, the wraith must have one dot in puppetry and two dots in any combination of life web, inhabit, and embody. Uh, so embody is the... Um, wait. Because puppetry is riding people. Inhabit is riding machines? Yep, and then in, embody, embody is, is uh, becoming moving. formed. You, you, you can form yourself, I believe, in the... Uh... So I'm going to say at least world. one in embody. Because he's already got life web five. <laughs> oh, uh, Keening, the the sound-based one. I'm just going to go ahead and give him one there. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, he's playing guitar. Why not? <laughs> it matches. All right, so this is Sarah going back to her apartment that apparently she hasn't gotten kicked out of because her mother's a junkie. And she puts on the record of the band Hangman's Joke, which is the band that Eric was in. And there's the crow. There's the kind of... Well, the, 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 the real animal crow. Yeah. And now, that, remember that the conduit is in constant, like, not conflict or cooperation, but kind of like coexisting with the Risen. And what it really wants is for the Risen to, to follow its passions in order to generate enough angst in the conduit slash shadow so that the shadow can take over. Because that can happen. Uh, a Risen's body can be taken over in the similar way that a Wraith uh, can be taken over by its shadow. Right, yeah. So... So really in this kind of version, the crow, the animal of the crow, the conduit here is really the bad guy, like manipulating uh, conduit, factors yeah. in order to uh, get what it wants, which is to drag a soul to oblivion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now this is, this is one of the reasons that I, I kind of like the Umbral Realm representation. Uh, again, these guys are archetypes. They, they're very one-dimensional characters who are not complex at all. They are just representations of the worm. You know, consumption, uh, hedonism, corruption, 
I mean, this guy is just obsessed with fire. And there's the Krogan. I do really like the uh, the interpretation of this possibly being all like I could even even see this being as like one hundred percent you know no humans involved and this is just shit that happens in in an umbral realm sometimes with the uh, the spirits that are there. Yeah. You know, listening to a lot of uh, the the mage the podcast, you know, the interpretation of umbral realms being these places where they these spirits imbued with just generalized ideas of reality, just going through the motions over and over again. Although that car hitting him is definitely entropy slash. Oh, I didn't talk about that one before. Um. Uh, so the other inherent uh, risen power is called serendipity, which is basically entropy. Uh, the, the the basic abilities are right place, right time. Uh, you just he just finds himself in the right place, and key player um, risen with key player will instinctively know if she is in the presence of who is important to her in some capacity, and then. I like how these so the police level... officers are are so intent to go get get a, a speeding car. <laughs> like, <laughs> out of all of the crime in this city, apparently speeding is an extremely extremely bad uh, yeah. crime. <laughs> uh, so the the level five power for serendipity is called the coincident gathering. Uh, this art is similar to fortuitous meeting. However, it gently coerces multiple targets to run into each other, regardless of whether or not the acting Risen is present. The Risen using the art has the option of choosing whether her targets simply bump into each other or into each other and her as well. And it's like... Because, like, movies are just all coincidence. Like, like that happening with the, the mud on the windshield. Uh, the, the cops doing the chase. All of that kind of has to happen for these things to play out. Hmm, that's interesting. So you're thinking that this is something that that the crow is enacting all of this to ensure that all these like little coincidences kind of come together here. Yeah. So in fact, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and give him serendipity. I eh, might as well just give him life five or serendipity five, just because uh... he's an OP starting character. You know, he just uh, you know the GM was yeah, very generous and new when he started, and was just like, yeah, just slap in a bunch of dots. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you don't need to learn yeah, any this of this shit. Time. You just this is innate. This is the first time I'm realizing that the trunk was filled with explosives because they were going to go burn down the city. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you planted them in the trunk before. Uh, and that makes no sense. All right. <laughs> so that, that speech right there is the essence of the Risen. What do you want? And he's getting what he wants. <laughs> oh, this is where this dude recognizes him. All right, listen to this line. You ain't you. This is the really real world. Yeah. Come on. This is the this is the really real world. <laughs> this is the really real world. There ain't no coming back. That is uh that would make you fucking crazy. Felt how awful goodness is. Oh god, that would suck. Yeah, this is, uh... He 
he's got a lot of completely. setup there you know like that, that feels very magical for the setup like it, i feel like he didn't get all of this these things like arranged in order it was all just you know yeah and i feel like this scene is probably one of the reasons that this movie is you know famous like this is a really just well done <clears throat> action sequence very emotional very on theme with uh, with Wraith and the world of darkness in general. All right, so now, regardless of whether this is in the real world or in an umbral realm, this this guy is, I think he's a mage. Yeah, he seems very mage like. You know, he's he's catching on to things, and it's not completely freaking him out. You know. Yeah, possibly Nefandus. Yeah, I would say Nefandus would be uh, spot on. He could also just be a syndicate or uh, a um, Ooh, uh, NWO cult ex- NWO cult of ecstasy. I mean, if you you know you could always you can throw any of the you know uh, even a uh, I don't think you Thanatos, but uh, yeah, actually, I I would uh, I would say syndicate or NWO is probably the the higher possibility. Especially if you're going with your umbral realm that you're talking about, because that's uh, technically... Oh, yeah, Um, because I was just going to say, in um, the Umbra books uh, for Mage of the Ascension, in the description of Dystopia, they specifically reference uh, that technocrats, like, almost just live there. Uh, It's mostly corrupted (coughs) technocrats, like shitty ones. At least yeah. from our perspective. But you don't have to. I mean, there's. I guess there's always varying degrees of Nefandi, which is always kind of interesting if you look at, uh, if you actually look at how powerful a Nefandi can be by corrupting certain people, um, and then they don't even know they're working for a Nefandi or that they're Nefandi. Um, I don't consider those necessarily Nefandi until you you know that you're a Nefandi, you've done the rituals to become an actual Nefandi, but there's a lot of Nefandi out there, a lot of people who are a lot of hunters of Nefandi that would consider just adjacent control being controlled by a Nefandi making you Nefandi. And I think that's there can be a lot of that happening in the city. Absolutely. All right. There's not much uh, supernatural going on here. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw out here um, another passion could be like saving innocence. Oh, yeah. He definitely displays a, uh, a, a need because he didn't know who she was when he pulled her off of that skateboard to yeah. uh, save and, her. In general. Just like his attitude. Um, let's see. I'm just going to say, let's uh, throw his mental stats just up to two each. I'm also going to put um, his willpower pretty high just because he's, uh, he oh, displays yeah. that he's just a very willful individual. Um, I think he'd be burning yeah, willpower see. points all over the place during this. Yeah. Uh, let's go wits three for that. Uh, at least alertness two, athletics two, awareness two, empathy? Yeah, I give him definitely empathy. Oh, expression. He likes to oh, quote yeah. things and uh, tell jokes. Yeah, so he's expression. two there. Uh, intimidation. Oh yeah, he's three or four. Yeah, three. Uh, persuasion. Uh, I'd give him like a three in that. He seems to be pretty persuasive when he was talking to the cop. He's got streetwise yeah, uh, for sure. Maybe two there. Subterfuge. Does he lie ever? He doesn't seem to lie very much. Is why I wouldn't put his manipulation high or his uh, subterfuge really that high. He's not. He doesn't seem to be going around lying as much as uh, telling the truth in order to get what he wants. You know. Yeah, there's there's almost no pretense to his character. It is it is what you get. <laughs> I like how his knowledges are completely empty. Um, but we, yeah, we don't really get much out of him. In a, mm. I mean, actually, he seemed kind of like he would have some academics. I don't know about bureaucracy. I'd give him maybe yeah, no. some enigmas. He uh, seems to be uh, enigmatic let's... himself, but uh, doesn't really. Uh, let's seem... give him one of enigmas. Uh... Investigation, I'd give him three. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
Uh, yeah, medicine, we don't really know. Occult, not really. You know, maybe one because he, now he is a supernatural. And he seems to know about, I don't know, drawing weird shit all over the place. So the last left of that, I wouldn't, yeah, I don't really, we don't really get to see any yeah. of that or it doesn't really matter in this movie. No science or technology. You know, that's uh, uh, one let's... thing too, just by doing this, I think that it would be a lot of fun to start doing some movie, one, one shot movie, uh, tabletop games for, uh, the world of darkness where you can, you know, it's a one shot. You can kind of mess around with things a little bit more, focus in on things and, uh, but like basing it on like kind of being like a movie. Um, yeah, we'll have to play around with that. Uh, let's see. Is anything supernatural going on here? The cat. I don't know what the, yeah, cat, the cat is. The cat seems to be something special. Like, knew that there was bad guys you know maybe that's a uh it could be a beforehand they might have even been mages beforehand like cult of ecstasy mages or something like that um oh i hadn't thought about that yeah and then that's a familiar or something of theirs that uh oh that uh that reminds me there was uh, a theory that i came up with which was uh because they both died right what if they both became wraiths and he was the one that came back, but they were working together in the Shadowlands uh, to like work towards one of them becoming a Risen. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but I don't, I don't get the feeling. I, I get the feeling like he, you know, there's a deep loss there. Not even the, you know, seeing her on the other side, kind of stuff. Um, like maybe she didn't become a wraith. Maybe she didn't, you know didn't need to become a wraith oh yeah didn't have quite the passion also, when, life as him in that last scene where he kind of just uh shows up in shadow uh she, she turns around when he's not there and turns back and he is there that's obfuscate oh yeah <laughs> this guy's so fucking crazy yeah <laughs> honestly a lot the, the acting in this movie is honestly pretty good <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I like how they just are like totally just dismissive of this guy no yeah. uh so now interestingly enough uh part of being a risen is that once your contract with your uh shadow is done you basically just kind of fold back into the Shadowlands. Like, your body just kind of stays wherever it is. And in theory, he came back to kill these four dudes. Once he kills this guy, it's done. Theoretically. And in fact, you know, in the next 20 minutes or so, I think he does accomplish that, and he goes back to the grave, and he just kind of says, eh, you know, whatever. And it's it's the big bad top hat, who like forces the issue and creates the the final battle scene? Oh which, yeah, right. Um, which actually kind of ties in with the idea of uh, one of his passions being saving innocence, and specifically Sarah as one of his fetters. Um, but we'll see that coming up. It's a very interesting cat, man. Like <laughs> he just wanders around the city with people. And... <laughs> I, I like the idea that maybe that's a that's a fetter. He's just chilling out on the like table, like not getting uh, shoot off. Down? We only have two more slots for fetters here. I, uh, I would I would at least make it a fetter if not. A, uh... All right, I'll uh, I'll put it in here. Can't. All right, Keening again. Oh, he's just ripping that guitar. I kind of, you know, I always, whenever I thought of the crow, I always thought of him as like just as another good, you know, like as like a good spirit that's helping him out kind of thing. But I really like this idea that it's like his, it's actually just, you know, his conduit and his, you know, his shadow. Um, and so it's not trying to help him, but it's not trying to hurt him either. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it, 
the angstiness that he just had actually you know is kind of like you know exactly what the the crow is looking for yeah and now if i didn't uh you know really spell it out earlier so the process of rising involves basic um if you do it in a game whoever's controlling your shadow you have to negotiate with them there has to be like a contract so you have to say like this is what i'm going to give you uh so like you know control over my wraithly body for you know a year or something like that um and I'm usually sure in game that's going to be another player which is interesting yeah yeah they specifically reference that in the uh the risen source book um but yeah so so there is a contract that he is uh the the, the shadow is helping him fulfill right now and in fact, in the Risen book, it specifically says that, like, this is super rare that this happens. That makes sense. Although, I gotta say, they almost just wrote this specifically so that they could play the crow. <laughs> Feels like Feels it. Rare. I can see that. It is. It's very it's rare. Only, it only happens in the one shot that we... <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it explains the big parts, right? His, uh, his memory powers, um, the ability for him to uh do all the things in combat and heal really quickly uh now also if this is in an umbral realm i just love the idea that these are all like the umbral representations of different crime lords and this guy is like in charge of all of them I like the uh, the bloodied, fucked up, crazy guy that's at the table, though, too. <laughs> Apparently, that's well. They know he's important. important, right? They know he's important, but I think they don't understand that once he dies, the other guy just like kind of disappears. Devil's night. Oh, he is just such the urge worm, right? I would almost argue that he is an incarna of the urge worm that exists in dystopia. Mm. I like that. Still can't figure out what she is, though. Is this the Euthanatos? Maybe a Nefondus? Yeah, Nefondus that serves the urge worm. Yeah, I could see she definitely, or just another aspect of the urge worm, you know? Ooh. Split him spell self into three here, you know. Actually, yeah, that's an interesting idea because there is three of them. He's the urge. What are the other two? Corruption and is it hunger? I can never remember this stuff. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so right here, this is an interesting thing. Like, why did the crow? Oh yeah, never mind. I thought that he's I I thought I remembered something about the crow getting shot at right there, but never mind. It's later on that that happens. So this is the infamous scene though, isn't it? Where where he actually gets shot over the actor really? dies. Yep. Um I honestly can't remember. Um cuz I thought it was specifically it was a scene with just one person with a gun. Um, but I can't be sure. See, it is interesting that he did tell them that, like, yeah, I'm not here to hurt any of you. If you just give me over the imbecile, like, I will, yeah. I will disappear here. Yeah, and the only reason they're trying to kill him is because he's, like, fucking with their business. And he's just like, I just want that guy. And I'll go. Like, she knows, too, to get that crow. She's like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the guy that was just shot, the first guy that shot, was the, the writer of the movie. Oh. So let's see if from here on out if we can, like, because I think some of he was still shot some of these scenes in advance, but I feel like that's where, you know, that's the end of, of the...
Oh, this guy is very, very uh, <laughs> heroic, you know. Grabs a small little skinny girl and just puts her as a body yeah. shield. And now, throughout this thing, you know, he's probably doing a lot of potence, a lot of uh, fortitude, a lot of celerity. Also, um, uh, usually dead things take half damage from bullets um, because they're they're bashing oh. damage to them. So yeah, you can take oh, a lot um, oh. of bullets as a uh, as a supernatural yeah. undead. And now risen have ten corpus levels and no negatives. Right, uh, so it doesn't. No matter how fucked up they are, they're still going to hurt you. Just yeah. As so as long as they don't go down to zero, but like I referenced before, he can he can heal two levels every single turn as long as he has pathos to spend and he's basically generating probably uh, I don't know how the role works but it's probably like four to five a turn and he is uh, he is displaying I think we're going to have to bump his uh, firearms up to at least four now. Brawl seems to be at least four. I could almost argue for fives in those. He's, he's just like shooting down people left and right. Pretty good. Now the interesting thing is he killed everybody first and then he went for this guy. You know, but but that kind of goes into the whole revenge aspect where, you know. He's like, I want to exact revenge on this guy. I don't want to just kill him. All these other people are just expendable and easily killed, you know. But here's the uh, actually exacting. Uh, he's trying to pull some subterfuge on him. Yep. And then he and checked his mind. Window. Oh. But yeah, he probably just did, did use... Uh... The mostness to check the memories. <laughs> Move and we shoot. A little dance. And then he dances off. That was pretty good. Okay, so the cop, uh, Albrecht showing up, I think is a part of serendipity. Like, you don't think right, that this, is, this he got actually tracks. In? Well, no, because they um, they basically put him on. Oh yeah, us. that's right. So now he's getting chased by a helicopter. The police get shot at. Definitely displaying some potence there, jumping over that. Uh... Most people can't jump that far vertically, you know. Some long jumpers, I guess, in the world. That's too far for him, even though. Ah, uh, you gotta love being undead, you know? Just drop off of a fucking building. There's a serendipity. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Perfect. That line never made sense to me. Yeah, yeah duck. Duck where? Like, what? He's been shot like a thousand times, dude. Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Or celerity. <laughs> he literally he shows up for 15 seconds to drive him a block. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> that, is, that is, yeah, he should have just obfuscated at some point. <laughs> Maybe that's what he meant by okay. just duck. He's like, oh yeah, that's right. Here, I do have fun. Here's the part where she uh, explains it. He's a link between the land and the living. Yeah, he's talking about the pro. Yep. She is. Yeah. All right. So I waited until now to take this up. Uh, so the conduit has 10 health levels. Uh, if the conduit is damaged, Risen's ability to regain corpus is compromised. Wounded Risen are not able to heal themselves above the current health rating of their conduit. So a Risen whose conduit has taken seven levels of damage can have no more than three corpus levels. 
So, so that's the, the mechanism there. Um, and it does seem like he's like disappearing here. He's getting, you know, he's fading from the world now because he's accomplished his task. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, emotionally getting ready to go back. It's interesting if he would have just probably, if the, those guys would have just waited him out, he would have just disappeared on his own. You know, I do kind of wonder if there was a, a version of this film that ended with this part, right? But then they went back and said, like, well, no, we need a big fuck off battle at the end, please. Yeah. Because <laughs> you could you could end it here. You know, he kills Skank, finishes his contract, and goes back to his grave uh, to return to the underworld. But of course, we'll see what happens in just a minute here. Oh, here it is. If a Risen's conduit is destroyed, whichever of the race personalities was inhabiting at the time is destroyed as well. Uh, so that's if your psyche transfers to the conduit. Uh, uh, the remaining personality in the animated body is now free of the other half, though only for the relatively few hours it will take to decompose. Hmm, does that mean it'll just come back then? Yeah, I guess it means that you would go back to the Shadowlands without your uh without your shadow. Or just a it says uh, just a few hours though, right? But... So you'd only be well, that's in your for a short time. Yeah, but uh your psyche would return to the Shadowlands, I think. Wait. If a Risen loses all her corpus levels and pathos, her tenure as a Risen has ended. Her body will revert to the state it was in before uh, the Wraith became a Risen. Complete destruction. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, once a Risen is destroyed, her psyche plunges straight into oblivion and undergoes a final harrowing. If she survives this, she returns to the Shadowlands and can no longer become Risen. If she fails, she is utterly annihilated. Yeah, so don't get destroyed as a Risen. <laughs> And you can become a risen again after you uh you can make another deal to become a risen again if you if you wanted, right? If you didn't get destroyed. Uh yeah, that's actually so in the risen uh source book, uh or supplement book, there's travel between the worlds. Some risen are strong enough to travel back and forth between the skin lands and the shadow lands. It's risky but come and comes at a high price, but there's some who are willing to pay it. So you basically have to renegotiate the contract every single time. Yeah, so this is interesting. So basically his contract is up, he was probably going to leave, and then he probably renegotiated to save her. Yeah, absolutely. Because like right here, he's still fact, like peaceful. He seems like he's about to go back. You know, he's oh, yeah. not like going out to go hunt for these guys. And I think, yep, here it is. It's it's the conduit who says like, "Hey, check this out." Yeah, don't you want to be? <laughs> You're gonna leave, right? <laughs> yep. Generate some more angst for me. And he's like, "Yeah, I'll fucking do it." And that's like the kind of like you know we think of it as like a good action, like oh wait, the way to go crow to show that you know we need to save this girl type thing. But it's like you know if the ulterior motive underneath that crow is all about getting this guy's you know soul into the oblivion, then you know it seems more. It's kind of crazy, like you know, the the bird becomes so much more devious, you know, yeah. the spirit. All right, so the bird was just shot. So the now. How many health levels did it take? Like, oh, it looks like he he got fucked up, man. And uh, but this kind of this kind of matches because like really well with what you were saying because like right now he isn't it didn't hurt him it didn't make him fall or die or do anything it just is going to limit his ability to heal. Yeah. So, uh.
Might have been that scene right there, too, that, uh... Yeah, I was trying to find what happens when the conduit is damaged, but yeah, it doesn't say that uh, the Risen is affected other than that. Yeah, and seeing um, he can't heal now, and he, he normally would just heal. Now, the one thing is that he normally, he, in, in, in game, he wouldn't have minuses to his health levels that he seems to be having right now. Uh, there is a provision for that somewhere. It has to do with... Now there's the, there was a gunfight. There was a firefight. I do like all of a sudden that he's like able to run around, jump and move and stuff. Whereas before he was just like laying on the ground. Now her picking up the bird is kind of interesting because they do reference in the book <clears throat> something called the conduit alone. So if a conduit remains in the real world, but a what the Risen's body is destroyed, the conduit is a potent object, a bridge between the worlds of the living and the dead, imbued with the remnants of an often malicious personality. Ooh, so she's kind of like taking it. Uses, yeah, its uses for a mage or other individual seeking knowledge or power are many. Even those unaware of the true nature of the Risen may well be drawn to the sheer power radiating from an abandoned conduit. Also, this guy showing up again. Yeah, very coincidental. Although I think he said something about why he was there. I don't remember. <laughs> I thought you were invincible. I was. Not anymore. I like how he becomes way more human all of a sudden. So it is weird that she didn't kill the bird, like you said. You know, it seems like she's she doesn't want the bird dead. She wants it alive to do yeah, something so. with it, if she can, you know. Yeah, if she's a euthanatos, absolutely. I think she knows what it is. She's a good shot, too. Oh, no. This is a shitty position to be in when you're... Oh, just as a note, um, Brizen can't uh, heal aggravated damage very fast. Um, mm. But there's nothing in this movie that represents aggravated damage. Although his, you know, to a certain degree, I wonder... Ooh, wow. I totally oh, forgot the... about that. Yeah. Kind of, it's like, I've had enough of this shit. I am going to rip out your fucking eyes. Yeah, so I would say, like, the conduit still has, like, you know, three levels of health. Oh, at least, yeah. You know, because he's... Why he's he's still, you know, doing pretty good. He's still up. He can still take a bit of damage and still heal it. Doesn't this turn into a sword fight? Uh yeah. But now he just said, I won't I won't fight you. Uh because like his shit is done. He's like He's like, yeah, I he just... made a next deal with the shadow to get the girl safe. Yeah. He doesn't and want to, to kill all of these fight. guys. He just You haven't killed the girl yet, and if you did, then I would be back here. Yeah, so this okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns into some he weird, shit very screen. weird sword <laughs> fight. Uh, but I'm going to give him a melee now of uh, at least three. Oh, yeah. Also just want to point out the aesthetics here. You know, the the vampiric style villain, uh, the, the undead, you know, very vampire hunter-esque looking dude fighting on the top of a gothic cathedral with gargoyles uh you know it's 
So vampire, so world of darkness. Also, is oh, is Fetter just uh, the ring just tumbles away? Oh, sword through sword. the back. Yeah. Not a good. Uh... He's probably down to one corpus right now. Hard for him to generate more pathos because he can't do anything. He's probably actually got negatives at this point, uh, so it's difficult for him to do stuff. Is his face paint gone too? Oh yeah, mostly. That is, it is raining. Yeah, but, you know, it can't rain all the time. <laughs> Rains a lot in this movie, and. We don't we don't really see the bad this bad guy we never see in the daylight, I don't think. No, I don't think we do. So he could possibly be a vampire. Oh. Oh, and this is. is a good one. Yeah, uh, the transfer. Alright, so this is Nemosinus 2, further reflection. Uh, developed as a teaching tool. With further reflection, the Nemos uh, can project his memories or another being's memories that he's made his own to someone else's mind. Depending on the memories being projected and the force with which the Nemos applies them, this can affect knowledge transfer or soothe or exacerbate existing emotional turmoil. Um... With success, the target experiences, uh, and that's the bad guy, experiences a sensory and emotional montage of the projected memories as they internalize them. It's readily apparent to them uh, that they aren't their own memories, uh, but her mind integrates them to the same extent that it stores their own normal experiences. Yeah, so you can actually do it uh, as a contested thing. I like so, how they're just all I mean, the shit out of I just love how Wraith just perfectly tracks with this. So good. Yeah, it just, it fits really, really well. I like uh, I like how you found all the little tidbits that kind of connect everything to, and how the you know even the the statement that the risen risen was based on this, and you can really see that. <laughs> hey, quitting smoking ad. It's a great, <laughs> a wholesome nineties yeah. ad. And they and they basically uh, included almost all of the source material from the Risen source book in Wraith Twenty. Uh, it's just in Chapter Eleven. It's just called the Risen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the Wraith Twenty and the Twentieth Anniversary books just did a really good job of just stacking all the good stuff all in one spot. And here he is going back. You know, he doesn't doesn't have his pathos anymore. He doesn't have revenge or anything. He saved his innocence and stuff. He's used all of his shit up, and now he's just... I feel like he would have faded away like this even if he wasn't all fucked up, you know? Uh, yeah, because once the contract is done, you basically just go back. But where is it in... Like how he's getting yelled at for. Oh, see, that's where I like the, uh, the, umbral realm idea, where they're all archetypes. Where it's just that guy is always going to get yelled at because he's the disgraced cop, <laughs> and the captain is always going to yell at people because he's the hard ass police captain. Now this part I don't know how to explain. Well, so this could be um, one is, is oh. maybe your your idea that she was in the the wraith realms as yeah. well, you know, like kind of yeah. matches. But I could also see this as they don't call it uh, enlightenment; they call it uh, what is it uh, when you ascend, basically as a uh, uh, transcendence. I transcendence. Think. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this so... could be transcendence, where he's now weakened his shadow uh, to zero angst. So very, very low probability of that. I, I do like, I think the idea is that um, he has crossed the shroud back to, to the Shadowlands. Yep. 
and that it does seem like it fits actually more with your theory that his that she's in the Shadowlands waiting for him. Yeah. But but it also could be an illusion, you know, just a transference of that's yeah. what happens, you know, when you transfer between or when he did at least. So now one of the thing one of the major things that doesn't track is that he doesn't remember being dead, being in the Shadowlands. So if this, you know, if this is a, a complete transference of the world of darkness. But uh the Nemosinus Arcanus, uh Arcanoi power, uh does have something called a memory vault, which is basically uh because it's illegal to be a Nemos, uh in the in the Shadowlands, uh you you have to protect yourself. So sometimes what they do uh and this is actually part of the whole meta plot of um uh Charon leaving and coming back. Uh it's it's all has to do with Nemosinus and memory vaults and stuff. Okay. And so it's possible like remembering his time in the Shadowlands could have prevented him from succeeding. In right. So he had to lock world. them away. So he, yeah. So so when so when she comes up to him as he is transferred back across the shroud, maybe that's her. Maybe ooh, maybe she's uh the Nemosis Nemosinus uh user. Um oh wait, maybe that does track. Oh, but maybe uh, she's giving him his memories back of being dead for a year. That could be it, yep. I like that. But yeah, this is a there was a good, very good uh, uh, example of of risen and wraith. I think is uh, uh, yeah. And we don't get a full character it, sheet, uh, but we got quite a bit of it done here. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, one other thing that doesn't track: it takes a really long time to learn these powers, but time and space do not exist properly in the Tempest. It That's is true. possible that we could have lived a decade in. Uh, Stygia, and then come back a year later. It's possible. Possible. Depending on GM. Possible. It's always open to interpretation and manipulation, all at the whim of the writer, and you know, or GM, or however you go about making your content. Awesome. Well, we are at uh, the end credits here, so I think we'll go ahead and wrap this on up here. But uh, thank you so much for doing this with me, uh, Moto, and I'm excited to uh, get more of these uh, done in the future as well. Is there anything that's on the docket that we have or any ideas that we have for what we're going to be doing next? Uh, we'll have to go back and look at that uh, Facebook uh, poll that we did, see what we got. Um... But hey, I, I should say, if somebody's listening to this and you disagree with some of the stuff that we said, uh, go ahead and find us at theageofstories.com. Yes, and then uh, if you have uh, suggestions also, hit us on up um, and uh, we might uh, take a look into doing those kind of movies. Uh, contacting us uh, due to watching what we're doing, you know, is very inspiring to us to want to do something that you want that you would also like to see. So uh, those those will have stronger weight. So throwing that out there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much and have a great night. Bye, everybody.